welcome to the three minute ish guide to Elisrasaur Heroic. This encounter will for most guilds be either the third or the fourth encounter of the raid, where you will split your raid into an upstairs team and a downstairs team. You'll have to deal with two control phases, one burn phase, and one healing check phase, which repeats over and over until either you or the boss is dead. When you engage the boss, she'll do a knockback, deal AoE damage, and start doing a frontal cleave across the room. As she goes across the room, she'll leave feathers behind her. They will grant 30% movement speed per feather you pick up and allow you to cast while moving. Picking up three will allow you to fly, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. These should be left to the people assigned to go upstairs, with leftovers being given to classes who can benefit from casting on the move, primarily healers. After around 20 seconds, Blazing Talon initiates and will spawn. These do not have a threat table and cannot move. They have two spells, one uninterruptible spell called Brushfire, which leaves a fire patch moving across the floor. This cast can only be interrupted with stuns. The second spell is Fire Blast, which targets a random raid member and gives the mob 10% increased damage and 10% increased casting speed. Assign at least one interrupter per mob. A few seconds after the initiate spawn, two eggs will appear in the middle of the room. A voracious hatchling will spawn from each egg and will imprint on whoever is the closest to the target, which should obviously be a tank. The tank will do 1000% increased damage while the bird is imprinted and is ultimately responsible for making sure the bird dies, so use your offensive cooldowns appropriately. These birds are hungry bastards and will only be satiated for 10 seconds before becoming hungry. If they are hungry, they have a 20% chance on a melee attack to gain the buff Tantrum, which increases the damage and haste of the bird by 50%. The Hungry and Tantrum effect is countered by going near a plump lava worm, which will make the bird consume the worm. Be careful, the fire from the worm really hurts. The ad will also do a frontal cleave called Gushing Wound, which is removed after 1 minute or if the tank goes below 50% HP. Non-tanks want to stay away from the front. Between the spawn of the eggs, a herald will summon a meteor. This meteor will travel to a nearby wall, and if it reaches the wall, it'll split into three smaller fragments. It's important to deal with the meteor before it reaches the wall, as you need a dead meteor to deal with another mechanic called Firestorm. If the meteor rolls over you, you will get one shot, so don't be stupid. Firestorm happens two times during each control phase and will essentially serve as a reset before you get a new set of ads. You need to look where Elisarosaur is facing and stay behind the meteor to avoid taking any damage. This pattern of dealing with four initiates, two hatchlings, and one meteor will repeat three times during the control phase, with two firestorms separating them. For the third round, the boss will cast Fiery Vortex, summoning flame tornadoes that patrol around the room. They go around in a circle and follow a strict pattern. You can either dodge up and down between lanes or just follow a tornado. This is incredibly easy to avoid, so if you die, you should get deducted. In this phase, there will also be flame rings that spawn, and moving through them will give you a haste buff. It's a nice little bonus, but don't go out of your way to get through them. After about 30 seconds, the boss will come down to the ground with completely depleted energy, and she'll be debuffed with burnout and take 50% increased damage, and will give anyone attacking her 10% mana for every attack. She'll have this debuff until she reaches 50% energy, which she'll get passively after 34 seconds. Two ants will spawn, however, and try to speed up the process by which Alice Resort regains her energy by channeling a cast. This should be interrupted. Have one Death Knight on each side gripping the ants, then ideally you like to have your healers deal with interrupting the ants, as there is no incoming damage in this phase. You can interrupt, stun, and silence to your heart's content. Once she reaches 50% energy, she'll enter her final phase. This is a big healing check where she'll pulse high AoE damage every second before ultimately doing a large AoE attack called full power when, well, she reaches full power. You should aim to use every single raid-wide defensive cooldown during this phase with a strong cooldown like barrier or anti-magical zone for the big burst AoE. During this phase, she'll also do a frontal cleave on the tank which leaves a stacking debuff on the target, making her deal 10% more damage with each cleave. You can tank swap at around 75% energy to not have the stacks go too high, but if you're a blood DK, it's completely unnecessary to swap. Just make sure to have some strong defensives like wall and AMS rolling towards the latter half of the energy bar. After you complete this phase, it will all go back to the first phase, and now it's time to do it all over again. I think it's time we talk about the upstairs team. Like I mentioned earlier, you get the ability to fly once you pick up three feathers. During progression, send up two people on 10-man and 46 people on 25-man. This is a control fight with no real DPS check bar the meteor on the ground, so don't get too greedy. When you pick up your third feather, you gain the buff Wings of Flame, which lasts for 30 seconds. This buff is what allows you to fly. A Lys Resort flies around the perimeter of the room and leaves fire dust clouds or fire rings behind her. Avoid the clouds and fly into the rings. Flying into the rings will reset the 30 second duration of Wings of Flame, 
give you a stacking 8% haste buff and restore some of your resources. This haste buff has a cap of 25 stacks, and when you reach that cap, you also gain a 75% crit buff for 40 seconds. When upstairs, try to fly somewhat close to Elizabeth Sword and stay grouped together when flying through the rings. When the boss does Firestorm, you also want to fly down to hide behind the meteor before going back up to reset your buff. Don't die to stupid stuff, kill ads, hit the boss, rinse and repeat, collect loot. And that's how you kill Elizabeth Sword on Heroic. Subscribe for more 3 minute guides and make sure to watch the other guides in the playlist on the screen right now.